Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees. We're here in the shop. It's uh, about the end of January and uh, the bees are, you know, overwintering here on the eastern shore of Maryland. And we are going to talk about a topic that we've promised a few of our uh, video uh, fans that we would go over. There's been a few questions on a couple videos about overwintering bees. I've had other questions uh, in my local community from new beekeepers uh, and even some beekeepers that have been doing as long as I have about what I typically do in the apiary as far as, far as hive bodies, hive body setup. Um, this is not a video that will cover um, anything other than the standard Langstroth hive. So I'm not going to talk about top bars, I'm not going to talk about anything else, uh, cathedral hives. It's just going to be specific to the Langstroth hive and my uh, perspective on the way I set up my colonies uh, and why. I'll talk a little bit, a lot about that. Uh, I'm also going to uh, just put a disclaimer out there that um, if you're now about a minute into the video and you want to uh, express your opinion about what you think is the right thing or the wrong thing, um, I encourage you not to. Um, definitely, I welcome the feedback from what you experienced, uh, but this is not a video for uh, the beekeeping community to criticize my approach. Remember, uh, as a new beekeeper, as a seasoned beekeeper, or even as a commercial beekeeper that runs thousands of hives, your bees are your bees. Uh, you may have a similar breed in a, uh, the type of um, uh, bees that you get, uh, but your bees will act differently based on your climate, your region, uh, the various types of forage within your area, uh, time of the year, temperature, rain, everything plays into what your bees will do. So everything I give you in my videos as my perspective is based on what I've experienced. Can you apply it? Sure. Uh, could you not apply it? That's your, your decision. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is hive body setup. Uh, there's been a lot of questions from new beekeepers specifically on, hey, do you run single deeps or double deeps? Uh, well, there's a lot of uh, debate around what's right, what's wrong, and I don't believe that anything is wrong. Uh, I believe it's just all preference. Uh, and there's a couple reasons why I'm going to support why I do what I do, and that's what I'm here to do on the video today. So what you see in front of you, what a traditional Langstroth setup would entail. Naturally, you've seen the stacks of beehives, you know, four and five and six, seven, you know, bodies, high bodies deep, usually with your uh, brew box on the bottom, uh, or multiple brew boxes, just if you so choose, multiple supers, single supers, uh, or also known as mediums. You know, those are the typical structures that you see. Uh, but let's, let's also just dissect this from the bottom up, right? Let's imagine that these setups all have their, uh, you know, supporting stand, as I always recommend, but they also all have their uh, bottom board. So if you choose to use a solid bottom board or a screen bottom board, again, I'm not going to discuss that today. Uh, I will mention it as it relates to overwintering and, and high bodies, but I won't get into the specific debate about you know, solid versus screen versus other decisions on how you uh, you bottom your, your hives. The same with top covers. I'm not going to get into that debate as well either. Uh, what I'd like to focus specifically on in this video is the discussion around the hive body setup. Uh, if you look at the one I'm standing in front of here, this is a standard Langstroth deep. Okay, the standard Langstroth deep is traditionally what is done within a, a beehive setup on top of the bottom board. Uh, you may have a slatted rack below that, but traditionally, you know, that's what's below the deep. But this is what's the first box that the bees will live in. The queen will be remaining in, laying her brood. Uh, in this box, it holds, this is just happens to be a 10-frame deep. Uh, you can get them in an 8-frame, or you can get them custom in any other frames less uh, than the 10-frame, 8-frame. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second with the nuke over here. Your standard Langstroth frame has 10 frames. This just has, you know, undrawn foundation in it, um, but it holds the 10 frames nice, and it respects what Reverend Langstroth has, you know, designed the, the style of the hive, not for the, the look and the feel per se, but to respect something called B-space. So if you put these frames together, 
the space that resides between these frames is exactly what the bees are that he had found many beekeepers find that is needed for bees to not build a tremendous amount of cross comb between their their actual frames or their combs um, <coughs> excuse me uh, when you pull it's able to allow you to separate the frames pull them straight out and be able to inspect both sides of the comb to see what the uh, the actual colony is looking at if you look at just setting the basis for this brood box, the traditional 10 frame Langstroth will have a brood's nest somewhere in the middle, taking up anywhere from you know, five to six or even more frames of a brood's nest. And we'll talk about that, it'll become important in a second. Usually the outside frames are reserved for the resources, so your pollen, your nectar, and honey. Uh, nectar being honey. Uh, could be uncapped capped, uh, but pollen as well. The brood's nest is, is not a square nest, right? You know, one of the things that I'd like to point out is your brood's nest is usually in a, in a round format. And I'll show you that here in a picture that the brood's nest, as you see here, is usually comprised of having honey resources towards the top, usually a band of pollen, and it's usually an oval-shaped nest that if you dissected this hive, in the individual frames where the nest resides, right? Imagine, if you will, a ball or a, a, a sort of a nest that fits within there. And if I can give you some sort of a visual aid, I'm going to use a ball to do that. Let's see if I can do this without dropping everything. Let's go ahead and set this like that. them frames up just so you can see the sides of the frame again imagine if you will these were in the hive the two outside frames potentially are your resource frames the inside uh, five in this example six in this example excuse me is the bruise nest so if I took you know bees and I imagine this is a nest a bruise nest of bees this is what I would define as about a three pounds of bees um, three pounds of bees is about the size of a mini soccer ball. And I know that because if you look at a package of bees, okay, you could weigh it, but if you took a package of bees and you remember the size of the cluster that surrounded that can in the middle, if you took a can and set it in, the, in this actual small uh, ball and you had the bees in there, it would fill up the size of a package that you would see if they all kind of gathered and clustered together inside of a package of bees. And that's about three pounds of bees. So this being three pounds of bees, when you install a package, if you look, that's the size of a nest that will make about three pounds of bees, right? So using that same logic, we can take and observe that three pounds in the colony doing their business with resources on five to six frames. If you notice what I just did was I slid my ball into a nucleus colony. And in the center of a nucleus colony, you'll notice that three pounds of bees will fit filling inside there. That's a traditional Langstroth setup using 10 frames, three pounds of bees, but those bees are gonna grow in size. They're gonna get bigger four and five and six and seven pounds of bees, right? It's gonna fill up a box. So your question to me is, well, Jason, how do you keep them from swarming? Because we know that bees swarm when they run out of space, right? There's a lot of discussion and study around you know, the exact triggers of swarming. Uh, you know, one would, also, one would believe that the fact that a colony gets too jammed with its uh, bees, uh, that it's too full in a, in a box this size would prevent the queen's pheromones that are admitted to a, tell the bees essentially that they they are you know in check. She's laying. She's good laying. There's plenty of, of other um, you know everything is in check essentially in the hive. But I'm trying not to get too technical on here and, and give you know all the different types of pheromones that bees use. Um, but just kind of make sure it makes sense to you. Uh, so that pheromone lack of pheromone proliferation through the hive could trigger the bees to say, hey, we need to start to think about getting to and splitting out to a new colony. Uh, and so they start to make swarm cells on the bottom frames of the box 
that you see here in order to swarm out. And I don't want to get into swarming discussions either, but um, that is why people, most people, determine they want to add more space. So we'll go back to now if you're a new beekeeper. New beekeepers go out and buy their, their hive setups. And you always see that hive setup, right, online, right, where they've got all these boxes stacked up and a nice lid and a, a bottom board. And you're saying, hey, beekeeping kit with all your gear, X amount of dollars. You know, all the frames, everything included. And you're thinking, well, I need that. That's what the bees need to live. They need this giant McMansion, right? Well, that's not true. That's not necessarily true because the bees don't need that much space to thrive. And it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish as to why they need this much space, right? Let's take your three pounds of bees that you get in a package and let's buy a brand new hive setup that you're sold and you bought online with no explanation. Put all your frames in here and then stack all the boxes up and you got the three pounds of bees going through that entire colony, right? What's happening? There's about this much space, right? This much space is being used by that three pounds of bees, okay? Now that's if they're clustered up. They're gonna spread out. They're gonna spread out and they're gonna work the frames. But if they're not able to work all of the frames, then what happens? You've got all this extra space that will actually create an opportunity for pests, small hive beetles, wax moths, whatever, robbing bees to come in and if they've got any type of stores that can't be managed, they're gonna come in and they're going to take over this hive, right? So it's not an iguana, it's not a lizard. You don't need to give it a big giant tank to grow into. They're bees. You need to allow the bee's space to be respected. The amount of volume of bees correlates to the amount of boxes you have. So if you're a new beekeeper, one of my biggest recommendations is, if you wanna get the extra equipment, absolutely. I think it's always good to have more beekeeping equipment than none. But do you need to put it all together and put it on the hive? No, you don't. When you first install that first package of bees, you really need to start with a single deep or a medium or two mediums, something that's going to represent a chamber this big. I'll also note that swarms, uh, it's been found that swarms will typically swarm to a, a deep size box, right? So when we build our swarm traps, we build them about this size. They're enclosed naturally. There's a small hole and they will swarm into a cavity that's about this big. So that's important to remember that if you're putting a new colony of bees, whether it's a nucleus five frame colony or it's a package of bees, a three pound package, a single deep is just fine to start off with. Then monitor your bees. This is the most important next step. Monitoring your bees, allowing them to grow into your colony and determining what you need to put on next is so important. And I go back to my 10 frame colony here. And in that colony, I use the 80-50 rule. What does that mean? 80% of the frames are being used by the bees, okay? With 50% or more bee coverage, 80-50. So when you look at a colony, if you pull the lid off this colony here, and you're seeing only, they're only using two or three frames in the middle, and they're just starting to kind of lean over onto this other frame. That's four frames that they're working. Yeah, there's going to be a few bees here and there, but as you pull these frames out and you start to inspect the colony, you get to that frame that's in the middle. And there are only a few bees on this side of the frame and a lot of bees on this side, maybe 50% coverage. You're still not in a capacity where you need to start stacking more boxes. You need to allow that, those bees to build that colony out, be able to work the rest of the colony. They spread propolis on all the frames and on the inside walls. They do that because they're sealing their hive, they're you know, cleansing their hive, that's what they do. Um, by adding all these boxes on, it just creates a lot of unnecessary space. So 80-50 rule, remember that. Manage your boxes as you get a new colony putting it in. If you have a nucleus colony that you purchase, uh, much like you have over here, this is a five-frame nucleus. A five-frame nucleus would actually be something where you'd be transferring five frames of an established colony into a new beehive. So if these are your five frames and then a nucleus colony, you have brood on two or three frames in the middle and resources on the outside, which is a typical nucleus setup. We have those nukes that we sell here in the spring and that's our typical setup. You've got a colony over here, right? When you're installing that nucleus, you need to make sure that you're taking out exactly how it appears in here and you're putting it in there, right? And then the bigger box and you're installing it. You can keep it in the nuke box, but likely that nuke box is full with bees uh, and ready to be moved into a bigger box. So you're taking those frames and you're putting it into that box one by one, exactly how they were arranged in the other nucleus column. 
By doing that, you realize that you still only have five frames, right? You have five more frames that have nothing on them. It could be foundation, could be you know um, just regular uh, foundationless frames, but they're five unworked frames. You're gonna need to allow these bees to start to build out into these other frames. So naturally, they're gonna work from the inside out. They're not gonna come and work on the outside in. They're gonna start to move that nest bigger and bigger to when it becomes a larger nest. So maybe it's, a, maybe it's five pounds of bees now. So this is representing a five pound bee, um, bee cluster or bee, bee nest. Um, you can see that when I put that five pound bowl on there, a five pound cluster or bee nest, brood nest, that it's now taking up more than five frames. It's taking about six frames. So if you use that as a unit of measure that says, hey, can I put a five pounds of bees in a nuke? Likely not. It would probably fill that nuke and overflow that nuke. Could I put three pounds of bees in a nuke? In the very beginning, sure, but they would be boiling at the seams already because they already met the 80-50 rule, if that makes sense. So when you have this 10 frame deep and they're building out and you get to the point where you met the 80-50 rule, the next thing you do is you don't want them to swarm so after inspecting and showing that there's no swarm cells, you wanna make sure that you add more space. You could do that in one of two ways. You could do it in the traditional manner, which is where you add a honey super. Put a queen excluder, put a honey super on top, allow them to fill the top with honey, and the bottom remains for the, the brood's nest. This is a traditional setup. This is the setup we typically give starter beekeepers, which you, you see here, which is your standard deep and your medium on top. This is a good setup to start with bees if you're a new beekeeper and you're just getting a colony that year. Moving into the next year, you're going to have to think about having more supers as they will fill this super up very quickly and run out of space. You don't need to manage it and you'll either need to do add another box or you'll need to do a split, which is a whole other discussion. Just a way of getting more bees out of your colony and creating a new colony. However, there are some people that like to use a deep double deeps. Why? For various reasons. Maybe they like deep frames of honey, and maybe they like to capture as much honey as they can. You can do that. They like, some people like to do double deeps, as well as then put their excluder and put medium on top. And that medium on top, this could accomplish, but at this point, this may not be your first year hive. This may be late summer that you see this occurring. Um, remember in the summer when they go into a dirt, they start to consume some of their resources. So as they may fill this up in the spring if you get a nuke early, or you get a package that builds out early pretty quickly, or you get a large swarm and you put them in a box and you build up to this point to where you're added these hive bodies. In the fall, when there's a dearth, they're gonna actually, or before the, the fall flow, they're in the summer, they're gonna start to eat some of those reserves if you don't harvest it. Therefore, there's gonna be a lot of empty comb in here. Well, now you've got 20 frame, 20 deep frames and 10 medium frames approximately, right? So about 30 frames of resources and you may have seven to 10 pounds of bees, right? It could still be this big of bees, right? It's still a lot of space, right? It's still a lot of space for those bees to manage. It could be just fine if they're covering the 80-50 rule. Your job is to inspect that colony and determine that their coverage is, is good, the volume is good going into winter. Which brings me to my main point, which is overwintering bees. Uh, when you look at what you should have as far as equipment, we talked about, you know, the style of hive, the frames, nukes, you know, 10 frames, deeps, medium supers, as you're in the main beekeeping season. But as you start to reduce down and, and it goes into close to winter, you're trying to get your hives ready to go into winter. The most important thing you've got to look at is naturally the common things, which is make sure the bees are healthy, there's a good volume of bees, make sure the mites have been taken care of, and they're low or little no, no pest mites within the colony, varroa mites that is. Uh, those are the things that you need to make sure. But as you prepare the hive setup for winter, this whole discussion that we have becomes more and more important. Because as the bees move into winter, there's a period of time when there's still some warm days in the fall. And if you're prepping your bees to go into winter, you need to balance the fact that there are still wax moths, there are still small hive beetles, and there's still other things that potentially, even during the winter, the mice are a problem, but you can take care of that with a mouse guard. Uh, but those pests like varroa mites, not varroa mites, but uh, the wax moths and the small high beetles, you need to make sure that when, a bees, when the bees cluster up, that they actually are able to move around the hive and do what they need to do to take care of the hive. So if you have setups like this, and you are trying to 
over winner, a double D, okay? We use that as the example. Bees will cluster up. Let's say you have a very strong hive going into winter, and the bees clustered up. They determined that you, you did really well, they've got a lot of resources in here, you got a double deep going into winter, and your cluster is a five to seven pound cluster. That's a big cluster of bees. This is a solid cluster, okay? Could be a little bit bigger too, but they will cluster up to be this tight. It'll keep the inner temperature core where the brood's nest is to about 93 degrees. The queen will still continue to lay in there, and this will cover several frames. This nest in a double deep will move very slowly, okay? When it gets below 50 degrees, bees go into a state of what they call torpor, uh, and that torpor will prevent them from moving fast throughout the hive. They can't run to a corner and, and, and take care of a wax moth or take care of a small hive beetle or go get resources and bring it back to the brood's nest like they do during the summertime. They move very slowly. This box that you see here, or this cluster, will move around that hive, regardless of the size, right? but it'll move very slowly. So if you've got a cluster that's this big that starts off down here, eventually it's gonna work its way up. It's gonna move throughout the hive wherever the resources are. The same if you run a deep and a medium, okay? But it's primarily gonna stay in one or two places. You can see here, running a single deep, it's gonna get the resources, and it doesn't need to really move very far. The resources are where it's at. That's where they're gonna stay. They're not gonna need to move all the way up into a second deep. The other fact is that as they move and as the winter progresses they get smaller and smaller so the colony after the first few weeks of being in the in the actual hive is no longer this big right it's down to approximately you know very say you have a seven seven pound uh hive seven pounds of bees in there and, and they move down to five pounds of bees okay well it gets smaller right because they've got to continue the outside bees are essentially dying off and the inner layers are staying so then eventually as you get late in the winter, you might only have a cluster of bees this big again, three pounds of bees, which is what you would hope going into the January, February timeframe because the, the queen will actually start to pick back up laying and increase the size very slowly, not fast enough to outrun necessarily the drop off, uh, but hopefully you're late enough in the winter or the die off, I should say, hopefully you're late enough in the winter that they won't essentially freeze to death because they can't keep the brood and the cluster warm. That's the, one of the main reasons next to uh, high mite loads that bees will die in the winter. We talk about moisture, killing bees, not cold. Well, they need to keep warm regardless of whether you believe it's moisture or not. So if a colony is so small in a 10 frame deep, right? Maybe it's only this big, it's like two pounds of bees, right? And let's say that, that small little colony, when you open your lid up, is only taking up maybe a quarter of this box. That colony is not going to move like this around the hive. It's going to move slowly. And it's going to try to stay where the brood's nest is, where the queen's laying. So if she's picking up laying towards the end of the winter, that brood's nest is about the size of maybe my fist inside this ball. And that's all the bees that are keeping it warm. And as those bees, again, can't replace the inner bees that are hatching out, the ones every 21-day cycle, as you get more work from me bees that, that emerge out, um, they can't replace the size of this. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually you're going to open up your hive in the wintertime. You're going to have all these dead bees on the bottom. And you're going to have a tiny little fistful frozen in the corner. And you're going to have all these resources over here. And you're going to go, I don't understand. My bees had all these resources. They had all this honey, but they died. And then everybody will say, oh, it's mites. It's going to be mites. Well, it could be. They could have died off because of mites. Uh, it's a very good possibility. But they probably just starved to death because they were cold. And they couldn't move around your giant hive, right? So let's think about that. Can't move around your giant hive. How are they going to move around two double deeps to get to the, all the resources up here if they can barely move around a single deep? There, in fact, is my point as to why I run single deeps here at the Bohemian Apiary. And I know I might get a lot of hate mail on a couple comments below that probably will argue with me, and that's fine. But at the Bohemian Apiary, we found that the last several years that we've overwintered bees successfully, that bees do better when they can manage the space they are in. The 80-50 rule is, much, is so much applicable throughout the year, as well as the size of the cluster once it goes into winter. Lots of bees. You could have two hives boiling over going into winter that will fill this. You could have eight pounds of bees in this thing. And as they get smaller and smaller and smaller, they're still going to end up to be the size 
eventually of what I don't my soccer ball with. Oh, there's my soccer ball. They're still gonna end up to be one of these two sizes and they get late in the winter until they start to grow back. Until spring hits and the pollen kicks back in, you're looking at a B size eventually of that big. So you can see as you move through why bees will last longer. And then my last point that I'll make in this video, and I know it's a long video, so I apologize, I've been talking a lot, but it's important that I share this information because I've experienced it and I wanna share it with you. Whether you're a new beekeeper or you're just an interested party, I love to talk about bees, so I love to share this information that's worked for me. We haven't talked much about this over here, which is the nuke. We just talked about when you start off with a nuke. Well, how about going into winter with a nuke? If you go into winter with a nuke, naturally, you couldn't go into winter with a nuke with seven pounds of bees. It just wouldn't work, right? They're gonna cluster up in a ball, and yeah, they may fill this, this out, but there's not a lot of resources in here in a five frame nuke on five frames with seven pounds of bees to keep them go through the winter. I have a solution for that. If you have seven pounds of bees, think like a bee, build a tree, and do two loops. You have 10 frames in there. You now have seven pounds of bees, or six pounds of bees, that if you looked at a, from the side, there's plenty of room for that cluster to sit in there. And there could be plenty of room because you have 10 frames of resources, right? On top, you could put a super, a mini super. You could also put a frame with a sugar shim to give them some backup resources. The point I'm making is that you have to think like the space and allow the bees to work into the space of the colony. We've had lots of success with these double nukes going into winter. We also have lots of success with these single deeps going into winter. And we have a few hives that we do leave a super on where they haven't finished up filling the super and we just didn't want to harvest it so we left it on for them to eat. There is no right answer. My point to these discussion in this video is to help you as a new beekeeper or help beekeepers that are in this business as long as I've been or even anybody that's curious that's been in it longer than I, maybe an old timer, to think about things a little differently. Think about bees as they need to be in the hive, not as you want them to be in the hive, right? Not what you see on TV as to what a standard setup would look like, right? But think outside the box and think like a bee and think what space they need. I hope you found it informative. Uh, I hope I answered some questions to some that may have them. I hope I've given you some food for thought, but this is my approach to overwintering bees, keeping bees and beehive setups. So if you have uh, any other thoughts on this or you want to contribute to what your experiences are, again, we like positive comments only. And not that you say you have to agree with me, but they have to be positive. You can disagree, but as long as they're positive. Comment below, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends. Because here at Bohemia Apiary, beekeeping for us is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone.